Well, hi, good afternoon. I'm Tim Foley with Cryotech, now a division of Chart Industries. We manufacture devices that do liquid nitrogen injection and dosing. Uh, what is LN2 dosing? Uh, liquid nitrogen dosing, or known as injection, is introducing a tightly controlled amount of liquid nitrogen into a container. For example, headspace in a container, the area where uh, is the difference between the product and the cap itself. Uh, one part of liquid nitrogen warms and expands into 700 parts of gas. So you have an incredible internal uh, movement of the ambient air and that allows the ambient air, including oxygen, to be pushed out. Uh, gas can be trapped in the container headspace for pressurization. If you require some pressurization of the actual container for rigidity, then this pressurization uh, can be had by actually putting the cap on or sealing. Uh, gas can be allowed to escape to flush out oxygen. That's also known as inerting. Inerting is where you're essentially taking all the oxygen or the maximum amount of oxygen out of the headspace itself. Uh, here's a statement from Kerry McMahon, FDA statement on the ability of uh, nitrogen not to be uh, not to have any negative effects on, on packaging. We're actually standing in 78% uh, nitrogen. The atmosphere is comprised of 78% nitrogen. So we do have FDA statement that uh, talks about the safety. A lot of emerging markets for us uh, on the microdose technology, now that you have uh, lightweighted packaging, it's a little bit different than it used to be where packaging was very thick walled and very rigid and could withstand a pr pretty high uh, amount of pressure. Now you have microdose technology which is needed to create a very little dose in a bottle because you can change the characteristics of the bottle if you put too much pressurization in. And when you have a 700 to 1 expansion of the gas, you can create a lot of pressure in there. We have a, a soft dose technology for hot fills. Essentially what we do is we take the liquid nitrogen and we gently lay it down on top of a hot fill product, thereby minimizing the splatter in the product. Uh, we're huge in the wine industry. We probably have 90% of the wine business. There's a lot of uh, enclosures now in the wine business which are going to screw cap on light variety wine. We're very huge into that. Uh, for inerting, inerting is not having pressurization but taking all the oxygen or the maximum amount of oxygen out of the headspace. We do it for beverages, we do it for powders, uh, baby formula, all different types of powders, various foods as well, planters, peanuts, peanut butter, almonds, wide variety. We also do, um, anybody who's got a glass to plastic transition, if you've got a glass container and you want to go to plastic, you've got um, problems when you have a hot fill and the hot fill goes in there and when it cools down you can have vacuum paneling so your package is actually coming in now whereas in glass you don't have that situation. So we can create some pressurization, counter pressurization so that we have basically an equilibrium once the hot fill product returns back to ambient temperature. Uh, ice cream, we have an application in ice cream where we use liquid nitrogen to flash freeze. It's kind of like uh, an enrobing where we put different layers on, say, granola bars and things like that. So we flash freeze chocolate on drumsticks, and those types of things. Uh, lightweight container redesign. This is a traditional application. You see the before and the after. Uh, before they had this kind of package. After they have this type of package. It's uh, a package that's a little more uh, consumer friendly, kind of allows them to uh, differentiate their product on the shelf. Uh, the customer redesigned the container base and the sidewalls to give it a different look. Achieved a 29% reduction in PET, lower material, or less material, lower cost. Uh, and of course it is compensated with a dose of LN2. That's what, that's what we do. Microdose technology, I talked about the microdose technology. You've got a certain amount of pressure that has to be put in a container with a very thin wall. Otherwise you'll disfigure the container and it won't operate properly. So. It's a big challenge, especially at uh, 1,200 a minute, for example, on a Dasani water line, which is Coke's product, Aquafina, which is Pepsi's. So we try to target that 
and you can see we're staying within a pretty good range here, two to four PSI. Used to be a lot different in the old days when you had, uh, say, the old Gatorade bottles, and you can't even crush them with a car, uh, let alone uh, uh, you don't even you can put an entire another atmosphere in it. You can you know put 30 psi in it, uh, and, and no big deal. But it's a it's a much bigger deal now that you have lightweight packaging. Uh, glass to plastic transition. Martinelli changed their package and went to the apple shaped bottle. Uh, this is a hot fill application in PET. Uh, no side vacuum panels, no ribbing necessary, much cleaner look. Successful glass to plastic transition. Eliminated paneling issues. The glass to plastic transition really is, um, is beneficial for this type of product as well. Not just in reduced cost, but in um, applicability of the product. You can't take a glass uh, apple container, uh, apple juice container like this to the pool or a park, various other places. So they're, they're able to uh, increase their market share by having this thing. Uh, be more consumer friendly. Uh, we did eliminate all the paneling issues and we were a co-recipient of the du uh, 2006 DuPont Award for packaging innovation along with Graham Packaging who designed the package itself. Soft dose technology. Our soft dose technology allows liquid nitrogen to be dispersed over a wide area and you put cold liquid nitrogen on a hot product and you can get some splash back. Our general dosing is a straight down dose, but with soft dose, we can apply the liquid nitrogen sort of like dew drops on top of the package uh, at the packaging rates. Uh, Hawaiian Sun is an example of that. Uh, treetop, we're doing treetop in the cans, eight ounce, 12 ounce cans for treetop up in Yakima. Uh, Herdes, rejection rate is dropped at Herdes. Uh, they, uh, there's the, the salsa folks. Here's the soft dose spray itself. Traditional dosing, you can see you've got uh, on the right hand side there, you've got the liquid nitrogen dose which penetrates far into the product. With our soft dose technology, you're essentially just laying it on top of the product. And that disrupts it far less. Inerting. This is a situation where you don't want pressurization in the container. Uh, Chris Pack Foods is a co-packer and packs these beer nuts. Um, one of our units is the LCI 400 system. Uh, it's a pretty high flow device. You need a lot of liquid nitrogen in a container this large because A, it's big, and B, it has a lot of voids. And the benefit of putting liquid nitrogen in here is essentially you're dropping liquid nitrogen into the top. Before it vaporizes, it will dribble down towards the bottom of the container, and then it will vaporize expanding 700 times and pushing the oxygen out. What you generally can expect from liquid nitrogen versus nitrogen gas blanketing is about half of the oxygen level. If you have a 2% oxygen, uh, if you have a 2% oxygen result with nitrogen gas blanketing, you'll have about a 1% with liquid nitrogen injection. Uh, that's a two pound container. Uh, we dose that about four or five seconds before the capper. Uh, we dose uh, before the capper, uh, extended uh, the product shelf life from six months to 12 months because of the reduced oxygen level. Uh, we just had an application for a uh, peanut butter co-packer up in Washington State and they're looking to get a Walmart contract. And Walmart came to them and said, I'll give you the contract if you give me two year shelf life, which is almost unheard of in peanut butter because of the high oil content, oils become rancid. So you have, uh, a situation where they now use our doser and they're able to claim the two-year shelf life and perform. Uh, here's a monthly spending graph. This is a major almond producer in the Central Valley, which I can't disclose because of a, uh, uh, an NDA at the moment, but uh, they essentially were doing nitrogen gas blanketing. Uh, they've now reduced their cost. This is the cost of liquid nitrogen, and they've reduced their cost essentially in half in, uh, in July, once they put our unit in, in, uh, in June. So you've got reduced costs there of about $10,000 approximately, in their case, a little bit more. Our units range from about 20,000 to 50,000. They put two of our $25,000 units in, and they've essentially saved enough in four or five months to pay for two units. So the ROI on the equipment is tremendous. Inerting for screw cap wine, I talked about the screw cap wine industry before. Uh, there's a greater demand for screw caps. 
Uh, it's becoming more widely accepted. It's very widely accepted in Australia, New Zealand, Chile, and Europe. Uh, since 2004, uh, Cryotech Chart has sold 30 systems to wineries and an additional 10 units to mobile bottlers. Some of the small wineries use mobile bottlers. Uh, we, have, of course, have a strong interest in those markets, Australia, New Zealand, Argentina. And uh, my colleague, Neil Shinsky, is really regarded as an industry expert. Uh, he speaks at wine associations, including one that was uh, in New Zealand. In the wine industry, of course, it's glass, and you really want uh, no pressurization in there. And so we're essentially just inerting. We're putting liquid nitrogen in, and then we run it under a uh, essentially a stainless steel or plexiglass sh glass shroud, and that just allows uh, a little bit of seepage of the expanding liquid nitrogen, but doesn't allow anything else in. So it goes, of course, between the filler and the capper. Uh, inerting liquid product, uh, there's a company called Cit Citrus Systems. Uh, we inert the headspace in 100% juice. Uh, through the liquid nitrogen dosing and other efforts, we extended the shelf life from 63 to 80 days. It makes a huge difference for a lot of manufacturers because they can have a longer shelf life and they don't get the product back off the shelf and have to credit the stores back. Uh, the plant gets an operational advantage in scheduling and maintaining product to meet the 40-day delivery. So they get a lot more window of opportunity on when they will actually want to do their filling. On the cold fill tea size, uh, uh, cold fill tea application, uh, it's currently packaged in an 18.6 gram container for achieving 17 week shelf life. We inerted the headspace, and now they can use a 13.1 uh, gram bottle. So we're seeing reductions of somewhat on the order of 50% in the overall weight, saving material cost. Um, and then uh, the 1.5 liter bottle for them, uh, I believe this is Arizona iced tea. Uh, the 1.5 liter bottle um, has gone from uh, 60 grams to 48 grams. So we're working with various people. We're working with uh, Amcor and U.S. Plastics and other people to, to uh, lightweight, save the customer money. Here's a picture of the soft dose LN2 technology. Uh, you have on the far right a diverging nozzle. Instead of a single nozzle, that's actually a multiple nozzle. There's eight small holes in that nozzle that come down. Uh, the ventilator nozzle, that's a type of nozzle which gives you a little bit of a, a misting. The regar nozzle, which means shower head in Spanish, it gives you another type. Uh, and then the hot chute itself, the hot chute is meant to fit into very small real estate, like for example, fog fillers tend to have not much room between the filler and the capper. So that particular uh, hot chute head works great for that application. Uh, we talked about glass to plastic transitions, talked about the Pompeian, uh, reducing their, their uh, paneling, making a better product overall. Uh, they're expanding it now to different lines. Um, operational savings are quite good. Uh, efficiency, no longer have to repack uh, glass boxes, eliminate broken glass. So those are some of the benefits that you get. There's a picture of uh, one of our units being used on the line there. Uh, inerting liquid product, there's uh, the Arizona fruit smoothie product. Uh, intent, of course, to reduce the headspace oxygen. Uh, preserve the flavor profile, that's very important as well. You certainly want to preserve the flavor and reducing the oxygen does that. Uh, in inhibiting mold growth is very important as well. Um, we're doing uh, work now currently, our equipment's at uh, Naked Juice and Palm Wonderful, some of those other companies, uh, and extends the product shelf life so the PET container can be lightweighted as we discussed before. Uh, here's powdered product. Um, this particular baby formula has a DHA in it, and a DHA tends to go bad in the presence of oxygen by way of smelling for what it is, which is fish. So if a parent opens up a, a baby formula and finds out that uh, it's fishy, you generally won't buy it again. So reducing the oxygen by uh, inerting is uh, something that's very desirable. You see a picture on the top here that talks about traditional dosing. That's where you'd have the stream of liquid nitrogen. In this case, we do a soft dose technology so we don't interrupt the traditional, uh, we don't interrupt the, uh, the surface of the powder very much at all. And here's uh, freezing for ice cream. 
Uh, this is that uh, example I talked about before, flash freezing. We've got uh, six of our inerter units fed from a six outlet phase separator. That's essentially a device that sits above the, uh, the lines and creates a nice, good uh, quality of liquid nitrogen. Uh, the greatest challenge in this was uh, to determine the customer's true project specifications and perform, and, and we certainly did that. Here's the uh, surface freezing I was talking about again on the drumstick style product that was for Wells Dairies and uh, Selecta Walls. Uh, the soft dose spray is applied to flash freeze surface pattern of novelty products such as this one and the product is then transferred to the freezer as well so you don't have any uh, you have uh, uniform coating of the uh, of the chocolate and and you get the desired pattern that you're looking for and that's my presentation thank you